to explain to others what we mean by Ha-Shakun. Ha-Shakun, it is what we are now, what we have been since the beginning, and everything that our children must become. Ha-Shakun, that is the way it is with us. <laughs> My name is Austin Hammond. I am a Tlingit Indian. Have been given the name Donawak. I am a spokesman for my people, the Shikwahari clan of the Tlingit nation. Our ancestral home is Tlut, an area known now as Tlut Lake and Chilcoat River. This is not my story. It is the story of what concerns our people today as we live in Alaska. Listen and remember, young people of my tribe, you with us now and you still to come. I was nine years old the first time I went to Chilcoot to be with my grandfathers. One's name was Jim David. The other was called Joe Whiskers, Kuanagas. It is a Chilkoot that they taught me things about our Tlingit ways. My grandfather said, the time will come when these things we tell you will need to be heard again. Somehow they knew the time was coming when the Tlingit culture would be threatened and I would have to be the one to speak out, to speak out for my people and for our land, to speak out for Chilkut. I tell you, for years and years, we found in the river our livelihood and our food, the strength of our families. With Usani, small harpoons, we fished, catching salmon along these shores. And all along these shores are special places where the salmon come. And each place has its own name. It was Raven who showed us how to get our food. Raven knew what was good for us and taught the Tlingit how to live. Raven exists in our legends and in our lives. Sometimes Raven is powerful and wise, and at other times, Raven seems foolish. But always the stories of Raven hold special meaning for us. It was Raven who hung by his beak suspended from the clouds at the time of the great flood. 
It was Raven who taught our people to catch salmon. These are the stories my grandfathers passed on to me. These are the things I am trying to teach my grandchildren. It is these stories that help guide our people as we live with the land. We think it have known the year not by the white man's calendar, but by the moon. The moon told us at which times we must again prepare for the harvest of our different foods. The moon was the backbone of our tanket life. Upon this land were built our houses, each having a name. My grandfather's house was named Kogiyahit, house that came down from the sun. And so I speak of the ownership of this land. The land belongs to all the Tlingit people. The fruits of its harvest are to be shared by all. For even taught us that if we live with the land, not against it, the land will take care of us. The land, the river, they hear us. For a long time, I didn't think about what my grandfather had taught me. I was busy with my family and I was working hard as a fisherman. But then I had a heart attack. Feeling I was near death, I could think only of my grandchildren and what I still had to do for them. There is so much for them to learn about their trinket culture, but also I am concerned because our traditional lands are being mistreated. I prayed to know what I should do about these things, and then the dream came. This vision, it was real powerful. Three times I awoke and three times it came to me in my dream. All the lessons I learned from my grandfathers came back to me. And I remembered what they told me about the time coming when I would have to speak out for my people and for Chilkoot. That is why I called both native and white people together to witness a day of ceremony. At Chilkoot, my people could speak not only of the Tlingit culture, but also we could perform the sacred peace ceremony to show others our feelings for the land and our unhappiness with this treatment. <laughs> composed by Tawiyat of the Kaguantan, one of the Eagle clans. It is being sung to the Chukwakadi, one of the Raven clans. It is sung now in honor of those of us who will lead the ceremonies today. My grandfather's land has turned upside down with me. Isn't there a Raven who could rescue me? It is important to our Tlingit people to feel the strength and power of our ancestors. And so I call out to their spirits, asking them to be with us at Chilkoot. Our spirits above. Our spirits above. Where could you be? Now that I'm enduring hardship, everything is overbearing. I value and cherish you, my grandchildren. That is why, as I feel the time of my death coming, I can think only of you. Oh, yeah, that's just cool, great, that's got hot, yeah. 
Lest my ancestors' land lay desolate, you will always hear my voice there. Please repent with your feelings, my father's sisters, and pray for your raven. <coughs> the people of the night, my grandfathers, running into the forest, running into the sea. They imitated your predecessor, my older brother, when he walked the land, when he walked the land. This song tells of Raven's return journey along the Nass River where he stole the box containing daylight from Nas Shak and Kao, noblemen of the Nasid waters. It is told that Raven came upon the people of the night who refused all his requests for food. So Raven opened the box, releasing daylight. Some of the people ran into the forest and became land animals. Others fled to the sea becoming fish and sea mammals. This song tells of Katrud as he built a house in honor of his maternal grandfathers. Before this house was completed, Petrucci gave his own life in payment for the crime of a clansman. Before meeting his step, his maternal uncles cried out for him as he passed among the faces of his people for the last time. It's drifting out, it's drifting out my suffering from my maternal grandfather's house 
I'm doing this.